I wanted to write a book about animal grief because the animals were telling me it was time to write a book about animal grief. I am defining grief as an animal who is very physically affected by the loss of a partner and emotionally affected. So I'm looking for things like refusal to eat, uh, very different behavioral routines from what is normal for that animal, some kind of body language or facial expression or affect of sorrow. When we see mother dolphins that are carrying their babies on their backs for days or pushing their baby ahead of them in the water, in one case for five days without feeding or with reduced feeding, with significant movements of the body that indicate distress, then that I would call grief. I think the degree and the depth of grief may in fact be related to intelligence, but the very existence of it, maybe not so much. Two ducks were rescued from a foie gras factory where they were force fed for that culinary practice of eating that type of food. And they were very decimated, both physically and emotionally, when they were brought to the sanctuary. They had physical troubles. They were very frightened of people, which one could understand. And they bonded with each other. Their names were Harper and Cole. And they stayed together for years. They had a very good life together at the sanctuary. Unfortunately then, Cole became too sick to survive and had to be euthanized. And Harper was allowed to watch this euthanasia event. And when his friend was lying still, dead on the ground, he came over to his friend and put his neck over top of his friend and laid there and just sat with the body. But for weeks after this, even more than weeks, this duck named Harper had a sorrow response. He wouldn't bond with other ducks, became fearful again of humans, went off by himself and revisited the places he had been with his friend. For example, a particular pond they had spent a lot of time together at. And all of these emotions seem very clearly to me to be sorrow. It's not just stress. It's not just an emotional change in some generic sense. It was very specific about the loss of his friend. And I want to call that grief just as much as I would want to call what cetaceans do, or elephants do, or apes do, grief. There's always the worry about anthropomorphism. Are we just being soft-hearted and we're projecting our own feelings onto other animals and we want to see our companion animals as you know so intelligent and so sensitive, but in fact, it's really not happening. Of course, I don't believe that. I don't think it's anthropomorphic projection. I think that opening our eyes to the depth of animal thinking and feeling is going to tell us that what we see is real. But this doesn't mean that every time an animal approaches a body, we should interpret its responses as grief. Animal grief touches people in a really deep place because we've all grieved and we all know how hard that is. I think it really forces us to think very hard when we ask chimpanzees to be biomedical research subjects or when we subject various animals to the entertainment industry in poorly run zoos or putting animals on movie sets or, and I'll just come out and say, when we eat animals, right, we eat animals without much thought about their lives and how their lives are affected by killing off certain members of a family of animals and that kind of thing. So I hope that there's a subtext in the book that's going to raise questions in people's minds. You know, what are we doing? And are we thinking carefully about how we treat other animals? Because they're not only sentient, they're feeling their lives and their lives matter to them very greatly. So sure, that's an absolutely central point for me. This is all a very new field. It's very exciting for me, really, because I think we're at the start of what we might call animal thanatology, really looking at all these questions that you're bringing up.